Obviously, the world around us, and especially the world of marketing, is changing incredibly rapidly. And that means that we are challenged to change with it. Without a doubt, if we are relying on the tools, the mindsets, and the behaviors of last year, we're either outdated now or soon to be outdated. Yet change is really hard for human beings. We're programmed by evolution to favor certain pattern recognition, thought patterns, behavior patterns that have always worked for us. And in fact, the higher the stakes and the more the change, as you'll see, the more we tend to retreat back to those old patterns of behavior. And so today I want to show you some of the best tools that I've found for breaking those patterns, both for yourselves and also for the teams that you lead. But first, I want to give you a sense of someone who I think is a real example of an unsafe thinker. Uh, this is Helena Folks. She was a vice president at CVS. She was part of a team at CVS that had to define the core purpose of the organization, much like you guys are work, you know, working with right now. And they define their core purpose, you're not going to be that impressed with this, it's kind of bland, as delivering health and wellness to people. Kind of obvious, right? And they all felt good about this, they started talking about their core purpose. But Helena Folks was a cancer survivor, or is a cancer survivor. And she didn't feel so good about this core purpose because CVS sold $2 billion a year worth of tobacco products at the front of their stores while delivering health and wellness at the back of their stores. And she started thinking that this kind of hypocrisy really couldn't stand. Something would have to be done. But she knew $2 billion of sales is really difficult to give up. She tried appealing to people's hearts about this, but people thought she was crazy, not just because of the money, but because it meant questioning this large and conservative institution that was dependent on this business line. Then she thought, maybe I can appeal to people's heads. And she started wondering if there was some way that CVS could actually make more money by not selling cigarettes. Nobody else, nobody else had thought about this before. But the world around them was changing very rapidly. The ACA was coming out, and um, healthcare partnerships were going to bring in a lot more money. There were trends that suggested that retail would be far less important uh, in the future of pharmacies. She started making a very logical case and building a team around her. Finally, she started building momentum. And just before she got this idea approved, they made her head of retail. So now she was going to have to cut $2 billion off her own books if she went forward and lose a huge amount of her team. She went through with it anyway. And in the first year, CVS lost that $2 billion. But in brand value, as well as partnerships with the government and healthcare institutions, they made 11 billion new dollars. There was nothing ingenious about this move. There was nothing non-obvious about this move. It was a solid business decision. But this kind of safe thinking that the organization had fallen into made everyone blind to it until someone with passion willing to question the status quo and make a head and a heart argument broke through. And so I've been thinking about how in a rapidly changing world, safe thinking is really dangerous. We may be selling that $2 billion worth of business, but if deep inside we know that we need to change and we're standing still, it won't be long until we're overtaken by someone who's more willing to embrace what the future is really all about. I hope some of these tools will be something you can take home and start using right away. Some of these stories are stories you can share with your team. Um, the first, in line with this conference, is about how to dare more deeply, how to face the fear that comes with taking big risks, and how to get others to do the same. The second is about learning, going back to that story of my own ossifying worldview when I became an expert. How do we both build our expertise without falling into that expert's trap? Imagining. How do we both listen to our gut instinct but make our gut instinct better and find those really weird ideas that no one else is willing to invest in uh, that can take us from you know, pretty good campaigns and pretty good solutions for our clients to something unexpected and amazing? Challenging is you know, how do we keep our organizations from becoming too nice? How do we keep our organizations from becoming too much about making each other feel good and more about actually going out and changing the world? How do we know when to follow the rules and enforce them and how do we know when to break them? Some of these ideas might seem counterintuitive at first. They were counterintuitive to me. Um, but I discovered that that's probably because what we think of as just right and true is often just conventional wisdom that's been hammered into our head. From